Well, good morning. Uh, I've got an absolute amazing video for you today. Uh, I'm a UK reseller. I buy and sell antiques and collectibles for a living. And today I'm going to share with you some of what I consider to be absolutely superb antiques and collectibles. I've had an amazing haul. Christmas really has come early to Splot Car Boot Sale in Cardiff in the UK. And I have got that much stuff here. I can make probably half a dozen videos from it. It is absolutely spectacular. So believe me when I say you're not going to want to miss anything. Okay, so let's start off with pretty much my favorite buy of all time. End of. There is no better buy. If you're a petrol head in any description, then these are going to be right up your street. So what have I got here? You can see me there. I'm sat down in Splot Car Boot Sale in Cardiff on Thursday morning, and you can see me sitting on my most recent acquisition. And there are two of them. Now, these are substantial. They probably weigh 50, 60 kilos each. Um, they are seriously thick, heavy aluminum or aluminium. Um, they, they measure just under half a meter tall by 305 millimeters in diameter. Now, I've yet to figure out what they're off. I'm thinking they're off a ship. Maybe military, but there's no, no military broad arrow or nothing on them, but I don't think they would be on an engine part. Um, they're just absolutely substantial. They are spectacular. Now, you're probably thinking, what the heck are you going to do with a pair of pistons out of a ship or a massive, massive engine? Now, I've actually put them on a couple of Facebook groups asking for some advice if anybody knows what these are actually off. You should be able to identify what they're off just from the engine size. However, they do come with a serial number. So the serial number there is S320, uh, S325008. And I have searched and searched and searched and I can't find them. Now, one person did indicate on Facebook that they felt they were from a power station. Um, but I showed about 10 or 15 different dealers at the market these. Um, and they all felt nautical, you know, uh, off a ship or boat. They are absolutely huge. And I took a photo of them this morning at home because I didn't want people to think, oh, you've just done a photo of them at the market. I can't lift them to show you them. Although they are just over by there. I might actually lift the laptop to show you one, but I can't actually lift the pistons. They are that heavy. Shipping will be a problem, obviously. But honestly, I don't know what to say other than I am absolutely head over heels in love. If you're a petrol head, you're going to love them. Now, I've got options. I can leave them as they are, all original. I can polish them and put a piece of glass on the top and turn them into coffee tables, which will be absolutely amazing in the home. A pair of coffee tables. Or I can have cushions made so they can become garden seats. But I can tell you now, even without cushions, they are seriously comfortable. I was sat on them at the car boot sale, and they're very, very comfortable. Now, what did I pay from? They didn't come in cheap. Let me see if I can just lift this up just so you can actually see them. I'm in my son's bedroom. I am. So there's the oil lamp I purchased the other day, and there's the two pistons. So just for anybody who's doubting whether I bought them or not, um, no, I paid £210, a little over $300, I think, uh, for the pair of pistons. I don't know how much aluminum is for scrap, but I can tell you now they weigh a ton. I put them in the car, and literally the car was riding on the springs. It was literally down. Um, what I should have done is had him bring them home for me in the van, but... When I make a buy that I'm in love with that much, I just want to bring it on myself. I don't want to rely on someone else taking them and bring them home, even though I did trust the gentleman. Um, absolutely love them. Uh, the question is, do I polish them and turn them into coffee tables? Do I leave them original? Or do I turn them into garden seats? As I've said, they cost me £210. I cannot find another pair. I have found people selling a single coffee table for as much as four or five hundred pounds, half the size of them, you know, narrower and smaller. There ain't a pair out there that size that I can find. So really, I can ask what I want and wait for someone to come along who wants them, an interior designer or whoever, um, 
and just wait for the right buyer. Now, the odds are I'm going to polish them. I'm going to send them off, have them polished up, absolutely beautiful, so they're gleaming, look brand new. I'll take photos of before and after so they can see their originals and have a piece of glass, circular piece of tempered glass cut for the top, and you could be talking probably a thousand pound for the pay of coffee tables. So which will be in about $1,500. That's roughly where I'm probably going to go with them. I'm going to get them polished up, restored, uh, a nice glass top cut from, and they're going to go up on the website as a pair of piston head coffee tables. And if you don't think that's unique and absolutely amazing, then have you got a heartbeat? Because <laughs> I love them. Okay, so I'm going to move on from there. You can see why they're my favorite buy period, can't you? I absolutely love them. Now, everything I've purchased this week, I think I've spent about £2,000 this week. Um, but I've got things that belong in museums. I've got some serious, serious antiques. So I'm going to share what I can with you in today's video, and then I'll probably do another one later on in the week. But to say the gear has been available, so I've purchased it. This... <laughs> Looks net something and nothing, doesn't it? It is tiny. It's probably five inches by about eight. No, five by seven, maybe five by seven inches. I haven't got a measurement here, about to guess. And it is a wood block etching or print. Now, what that means is they carve the wood and then they print it off the block. Now, part of the reason wood block etchings are more desirable than steel or copper engravings is because they'd wear out so much faster, so there's less of them. You imagine running a few prints off on the wood block. After a few prints, they, that's it, the mould is ruined, or the engraving's ruined. Now, this is by a lady called J. Elspeth Robertson. Elspeth Robertson. And the picture is entitled Bloomsbury Roof. And if you look there, it is basically looking out of an half-open window uh, at rooftops. Sounds pretty standard, doesn't it? I can tell you now, I've searched this J. Elspeth Robertson. And apart from there must be someone in her family exhibiting now on Twitter, because um, this lady wouldn't be around now, I don't think, because these date from the 20s and the 30s. Um, so you're talking... She'd be well over 100, well over 100. Uh, so it's probably someone in her family on Twitter. There isn't one for sale. I found a couple that have been sold on galleries, but you cannot find the price. Now, this was purchased again down in Spot Car Boot Sale three weeks ago by the dealer I buy off. He went on, done a little bit of research and come back to me and offered it to me at £75, which is about $110 for a five by seven print. Now, doesn't that sound extremely expensive? Uh, look at that, it's got an original label on the back. It's never been out of his frame, as you can see, which is really good. Now, $110, 75 pounds sounds a lot of money for such a small print. However, I researched and researched and researched and I couldn't find one actually for sale. But what I did find was this. This is uh, the British Museum. If you look there in the black bar, you'll see the British Museum icon. And object type is the print. Museum number, there I've highlighted in blue, uh, 1980-0126.94. Title, object, Bloomsbury Roofs. A view through a half-open window to roofs and chimneys, circa 1930, wood engraving on tissue paper. Print made by J. Elspeth Robertson. British School, product date, 1930. So basically, the identical print to this is sat in the British Museum. However, it is not actually on currently on display. Uh, as it states, they're not on display at the moment. <coughs> now, theirs is titled and numbered. Mine is non-numbered. Um, so mine is signed and titled, but not numbered. Theirs is uh, numbered as well. I don't know if that makes mine earlier. Mine might have been the prototype. I'm not sure. All I do know is this is the identical one they have in the British Museum. 
and they purchased theirs in 1980. That's obviously why this date starts with 1980. Uh, purchased from their exhibition of British printmakers of 1812 through to 1940, December 1979. So this looking small looking quite unimportant looking print is actually sat there in the British Museum with one of the top artists uh, being saved. So a very important piece of wood, wood engraving prints and it was mine for £75. Now some of you are going to think that's a lot of money for such a small print. Uh, but the fact it's in the uh, British Museum for me says I want it. Now, the next couple of prints all come off the same dealer. This next one is by an artist proof. So this is an artist proof, but not the start of the run. And it's Goats at South Crete. And the artist is Anna Ravenscroft. And we have a very large print or engraving of goats. I'm having to hold it at an angle because if I go like that, you get all the light in the windows. So I want it to see a tidy. Now, how do I know it's not artist proof? Quite clearly, because it's stamped the AP for artist proof. And then you have her signature, Anna Ravencroft. This has never been out again and you can see the size on it it's a large probably two and a half foot long by about 18 inches so it's a really good size spectacular looking engraving now i did my research on her too okay so <clears throat> Here's the uh, biography of Anna Ravencroft uh, at the Bertram Gallery. She talks here about being born in Scotland in a remote uh, mountain wilderness and that, and carried up mountains and childhood poverty and so forth. Um, she talked about having to make a decision between uh, an orchestra or a college of art, and she chose the College of Art. Um, then she had a degree in paint, painting and printmaking and followed by a postgraduate degree in art education and began teaching. Um, yeah, if you uh, come down to the bottom here, you can actually see her works. Now, bearing in mind, mine's probably two and a half foot wide by about 18 inches, something along them lines. I haven't measured it yet. You can see this is her more modern work. Um, you can buy for as low as sort of £48, pounds, uh, all the way up to a couple of hundred pounds. Now, bear in mind, mine is a large artist proof. These are going to be runs. Um, and there are some sold on there. Now, I'm trying to work out roughly what I've paid for it. I think it owes me about £50 pounds sterling, which is about $75, $80. Um, what it was, I bought a whole job lot off the same gentleman for £275, pounds, but I'm not going to put it all into today's video. So I'm trying to work out, cut it down as best I can. So this is going to assume it's going to owe me about £50 pounds sterling. Uh, very good artist, reputable artist, and a real good... Nice size, good condition, and a nice artist proof print. And if anybody wants to see anything about that, go to the Bertram Gallery. This next one is another good one. There's another print. This is number four of only 75 made. And this one's going to appeal to the overseas buyers, or the overseas viewers rather. American Black Oaks by Tessa Beaver. We have a very large print again of, as it says, American Black Oaks trees by Tessa Beaver. It's a very nice um, print, imagine. Fully signed. This one, however, has been out of the uh, 
pocket and could do with a bit of uh, tidying up, to be honest with you. I could, uh, I'm going to have to open it up because there's a little bit of a metal staple in there that needs to come out. And this back needs opening and resealing with brown paper tidy and neatly. So a little bit of work to do on this. Not much, probably about a fiver's worth of work. Um, and we're going to assume this one owes me about £50 again. So about $75, $80 again um, for a Tessa Beaver American Oak print engraving. Now, I've also done some research on Tessa Beaver. Um, some of their art is available online. And some of it for real good money. Some of it is check available because they've sold out. Now, if you look at biography, she was born in London in 1932. She got a diploma in painting uh, at the Slade School. She spent a further three years working mainly in etching under John Buckland Wright. She worked briefly as an illustrator and designer of book jackets before taking a part of an editor of children's books at Oxford University uh, Press at later at Thomas Nelson's. In 1962, she resumed painting and printmaking whilst working with her husband on Kenya, <coughs> Uganda border. Since returning to England in 1965, Tessa Beaver's prints have been shown at the Society of Wood Engravers, the Royal Society of Painter, Etchers, Engravers, the Royal Academy Summer Exhibitions, and I can't even read that. Nairobi, yeah, Nairobi, Durban, and Los Angeles. For the last few years, she has worked mainly in etching and she has held one man shows at the University of Warwick and Lantern Gallery in Manchester. So you can imagine this is quite an important artist again. Um, let me see. I like this one because this is trees. And I don't want to check availability. £138. Does it give size? Uh, image size, paper size. Edition size to be considered. It's not an original, right? So it doesn't make any difference. It's not an original. This one is an original by her. N numbered, they uh, signed the works. So absolutely love them. To be honest, they're both going to be a couple of hundred pounds each. No problem at all. Uh, they've only cost me 50 pounds. Um, so I'm really pleased with them. Really am. Another piece of the same buyer is quite rare. When have you seen one of these? Now, if I look into the uh, parcel as a whole, this holds me for about £40 sterling, which is about $60. So it's quite a bit of money for a money box. Now, it's probably a 1920s, 1930s tin money box, and it is contributions for the Royal National Lifeboat Institution. I do not have the key, however, it is open. So you could have a key made if you wanted to get a key made, no problem at all. They'd cut the weld, make a key, re-weld it, job done. Or you could probably find a key for it. Because they are out there. They're just not very common. There's a number script in the bottom, 1859. <laughs> it's actually, it's, it's not, it's 1920s, 1930s, something like that. Um, but a real nice money box. Now, I did try searching these up. There's no one on eBay, period. There's not. Um, and there's not one for sale on Google. Now, I did search them. I found this one here, estimated 40 to 60, but you've got to log in to see where it actually reach, reached, which is the RNLI template lifeboat money box presented. Sorry, pressed steel lifeboat shape savings bank is white dark blue with contributions for the Royal National Lifeboat Institution to sides with lockable cover and key, some surface corrosion to top, uh, may be enhanced by carefully polishing. Otherwise, a fair to good example and are rarely seen these days. 37 centimeters long, and that was in 2005. And I run a search. 
And these are the only ones I could find on Google. Live Auctioneer and Worth Point. Worth Point, Worth Point, Worth Point. And I am not registered to try and get the sold prices of them now. There's none actually for sale. So it owes me £40, $60-ish, dollars, $65. Dollars. Um, find me another one for sale so I can get a price happily. I don't care. Beautiful thing, rare and collectible, and I just love rare. If it's rare, I want it. It's that simple. Um, I want to try and fill my website up with rare articles. Okay, moving on. Sticking with Splot Market. Now, bear in mind, Splot Market is my only car boot sale left in Wales at the moment. The rest of our, the field car boot sales are shut down for the uh, for the winter and the wet weather. Bessemer Road is closed down pretty much permanent, uh, so is Bridge End. So the only one left for myself locally is Splot Car Boot Sale. That's why it's all come from Splot. However, I purchased a pair of these. Those of you who think I only do smalls. I have had a pair of 1960s Grafton acrylic back swivel chairs. That's one. And that is number two. The only markings underneath that I could find uh, well, it's all stamped up on the uh, mid base there, to be honest with you. EST. Yeah. Anyway, they are 1960s Grafton swivel chairs with the black acrylic back. They come in different colours. The seats are not the prettiest in the world. However, I'm going to do no work to them. They're just going to have a wipe over and be sold. Again, now I've done a bit of research on those. This is the only pair I could find. Uh, was a pair of brown 1960s swivel dining chairs, uh, acrylic backs, Grafton EST 4001s. But if you look at theirs, the brown is covered in scuffs and white paint all over. And they've had this sort of Draylon upholstery added to it, which is atrocious. Um, and they're £165 for the pair. Now, I paid £70 for the pair, or $100, give or take, for the pair. Like maybe $110 for the pair. Um, again, it's a block car boot still. I'm going to get some very, very soft, and I mean very soft wire wool to just rub down the acrylic. Give the seats a wash and wipe it down. And that is all I'm going to do to them. And then they're going to be up on the website. Not rushing. They'll go up as and when they go up. I'm not worried. I got Christmas coming. None of this stuff yet has been listed up for sale. It's all been purchased. And I've got tons of it purchased. Um, this entire bedroom at the moment, I've taken over my son's bedroom a minute because I'm still in the process trying to do my office. Um, so my son's bedroom has been taken over for a minute, which he's been pretty good with. Um, and I need to get it filmed, photographed, listed, and over into storage. And to carry on for a minute, I'll show you my next purchase. A Waterford crystal. And look at the size of this Waterford crystal. This is not a small piece of Waterford by any means. And it is not the Marquis Waterford, it is original Waterford Crystal. Beautiful size. Uh, what's the frame size? Does it say 13 by 18 centimeters that holds five by seven inches? So you have a beautiful Waterford, and it's from the wedding collection. So you have a beautiful Waterford Crystal. Um, piece absolutely stunning now comes boxed it's in good condition it really is there's no damage no chips no cracks no nothing 
uh, it's got his label and all the writing on the things. I don't know if it's signed anyway. It probably is. Yes, it's signed there. So if you can see it through there, it's got Waterford right there as well. No, probably can't. Anyway, it owes me twenty pound, twenty five, thirty dollars, and that's really good for a piece of Waterford of that size. Now I did miss three or four crown derby uh, animal paperweights with the silver and gold buttons or stoppers. I'm hoping to be able to buy them off the dealer I missed them with this week. So they'd be nice if I could get all of them. I'm not guaranteed to get all of them. It depends on how much he wants for them. This I purchased off a couple of dealers I know in Splot again. And uh, to be honest, they kind of were a little crafty because what they done, they linked them together like so and showed me an Albert. But what they didn't say and point out, and bear in mind, we're buying at six, five, four, three in the morning using torches. It's actually been broken. It should connect here. Should be a little loop connecting those, and then you should have the Albert and the clip on the ends, which is fine because do you know what? I paid 20 pounds sterling for this beautiful Albert, and every link is fully hallmarked, as you can see just there. And it is such a good looking Victorian Albert, it's not gonna cost me a fiver to have a link soldered on, a silver link soldered on to put that back together. So I'll have the silver link soldered on. It owes me £20 at the moment, or £22 at the moment, sorry, which is about $30-ish, maybe a bit just over. It's going to cost me a fiver to repay, so another $7, $7.5. And then I will have a perfect antique sterling silver watch albert for £27, which is a gift. Because a watch albert like that, well, if you look online, they are pulling money. Big money. In fact, we'll have a little look now how much silver Alberts are pulling, just so you know. Because for those of you who don't know, they are for a watch. You'd pin it into your buttonhole. You'd attach a watch on one end and a fob on the other. Okay, so that's a monster 313 gram Albert there. 200, 300 gram Albert. Again, they are good and much better than what I got at the moment. 235 grams 500 you can see though it's just a clip t-bar and then that for the fob um that one is 154 grams well i can tell you now mine's about 50 or 60 grams there's another one there coming down 425 you can see they're all pulling good money though watch albert again 160 grams again. Well, I should weigh mine, to be honest with you, because I'm only guessing 50 or 60 grams. Could be more. That's a double Albert. But look at the money on Alberts now. You wouldn't think it would. Wouldn't you consider silver as well? I don't know, 30, 40 pence a gram. Um, you know, that's, it's about 10, 12 pounds an ounce, 15, 16 dollars an ounce. Um, you know, they are crazy, crazy money. Look at that. What an Albert watch chain from 1988, 17 inches long, 250 pound. You can see the money. When you consider I've paid 20 pound for this, broken or not, all it needs is one circle loop resoldered on. Uh, my local jeweler is going to do that for next to no money at all. And I have got dozens and dozens of these fobs. I may even put a silver fob on there, which will add in uh, 20 or 30 grams, which means I'm going to be up along the lines of this. Yeah, there's a Victorian one there. It's probably around the date of mine, 1890s. You can see the money. Every single one of these I'm showing you is sold. None of them are unsold. The prices will come all the way down, obviously. That's lost the T-bar. 
but we just saw when I started the search, you can buy the T-bars for 10 and 15 pound on their own. Look at the prices on them for our butts. So if you see a silver watch chain or gold one, because gold ones are crazy money too, then suggest you pick them up and buy them. Do one more page. They'll go all the way down to sort of 40, 50 pound. Um, but people that sell a, a watch album for 30, 40 pound, there's something wrong with them. Um, or they just don't know. Because you get in, look at that, 150 pound for a standard, but they're 47 grams, which is probably around what I got, and they sell it for 150. So there's quite a lot of them sold. You can see what I mean. Be careful. If you see an Albert, make sure you buy them. Definitely got to buy the Alberts. Let me see if anything else I want to share before I call it today on today's video. I spent, I think it was about three, four hundred pounds with one dealer on Thursday. I've got a load of listed artist paintings. Uh, oil on canvas, watercolors. I paid a hundred a hundred pound for two watercolors, and the average selling price for those is seven eight hundred each. So I'm gonna put them in next week's video. Um, I've just got absolutely tons of it. So hope you've enjoyed having a little look see at these few pieces. I'll uh, I'll try and get another one made as soon as I can. And to be honest with you, I've got a, about thirty or forty pieces of this quality at the moment so i hope you appreciate them because i absolutely love them thanks for watching um and if you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe and remember to hit the like and the notification button bye for now